So I was talking to my friend at work the other day, and the topic came up, because, you know, it always does when guys get together at work, about Excel formulas. I am kidding, but this actually did come up. It was, I've helped this guy in the past with a formula sum if, and the question he actually asked me was, he said, I was working with the sum if, and I noticed that actually there's something called sum ifs with an S at the end. You know, what's the difference? So I explained to him the difference, you know, and the easiest way for me to explain something is just to show you in Excel, right? It's like, I could try to explain it to you, but if you see it, it's so much easier to understand. So I figured, let me put a quick video together, the difference between sum if and sum ifs. So let me do that real quick. Sum if, if you don't know, allows me to select a criteria to summarize data from within a table. So let's just say I want to summarize this quantity and this dollar amount, this invoice total by company. So I'm going to put a company here, ABC company. And it's one of the companies in this table, right? So I'm going to use some if and I hit tab to kind of open that parenthesis. And then if you look, it's asking me for a range a criteria and a sum range. So the range it wants to find is, you know, this is the logic I would, this is how I would think about this. What do I want to summarize this data by? In this case, it's the company name. So I'm going to basically use the company name as my range. I'm going to hit a comma. What's the criteria? So out of that company name, what company am I summarizing by? So in this example, it's ABC company hit the comma, and then it's asking me for a sum range. So here I am in column E, that's the quantity. So I'm just gonna highlight the, the whole quantity, right? E8 to E73. And so I could see that ABC company ordered 68 units this month. Now, if I wanna copy this over to say the invoice total, I would just have to anchor some of those ranges down. So hit F2, I don't want the company name to move because the company name you know that range column a I need to look at that in both of these examples so I'm gonna hit F4 to cut to anchor that down company name C4 I don't want that to move but if you look here the sum range right now I'm summing up quantity when I copy over to the right over the invoice amount I want the quantity you know, E8 to E73 to turn into the invoice amount, F8 to F73. So I'm going to leave that alone. So now if I copy this over to the right, you could see that A8 A to A73 was anchored, C4 was anchored, and then F8 to F73 used to be E8 to E73. So that's what exactly what I want to happen. So I can see that ABC company ordered 68 units and it was a total dollars of 7,681. So let's just add a couple more companies here. So I'll add ABC and then I'll add, let's say Joe Smith. And oops, let's just make sure it's spelled correctly. We'll add two ABC and two Joe Smith. What, what some ifs with an S does is it actually allows us to summarize by two criteria, right? So this, in some if we summarize by the company. What some ifs lets us do is say, we wanna look at company name and invoice amount over $100, or company name and region west, or something like that. So I'm just gonna, in this case, I'm gonna do, we'll do it by name and region. So here I have uh, west, we'll say south, east, oops. And then we could do, you know, the same two for the same two com for the different companies, right? So we'll do ABC by West and Southeast, Joe Smith by West and Southeast. So what I want to do here is go, instead of some if, I'm going to use some ifs with an S. So I'm going to start typing that, some ifs. And this might be easy just to see in the formula wizard, right? So... It's a little different from some if, so I just want to show you. It's asking me first thing for some range. So in column E here, I want to summarize by quantity. So the sum range is the quantity, which is E. So E8 to E73. 
Now it's asking me for my criteria one range. So my first criteria is going to be the company. So I'll use that company range, uh, name as my range. And then it's asking me what is criteria one. So we know that's the company. So I'm going to select the company that I chose here, ABC. Now it's asking me for criteria range two. So if I click in here, my criteria range two is going to be the region. So I'm going to highlight that range. And then what is my criteria two? So in this example, it's West. And now if I hit enter, I could see that ABC company ordered 20 units in the West. I want to copy this one down. So let me just, uh, let me just anchor a few things here. So I don't want, um, see now here's the deal. I don't want the quantity to move. So I'm going to highlight that and anchor it. I don't want the company name to move, so I'll highlight that and anchor it. I don't want C, see here's where C4, I want this, the four to move, but I don't want the C or the D to move. So I'm gonna basically hit the dollar sign in front of the C, but I'll leave the four alone, so that as I copy down, it'll go to five. And then this range for region, I don't want that to move, so I'll hit F4. And then again here, I'm just going to put the dollar sign in front of the D so that I can copy down and it will move, but the D won't move if I copy it, say, over to the right. So if I copy this down, I could see now for Southeast, they ordered 16. Joe Smith in the West ordered 13, and Joe Smith in the Southeast ordered 14. Now I want to copy this formula over to the invoice amount. I have to make one slight change to this because if I come here, F2, the first range, which is the sum range, right now I've anchored it into quantity. When I copy it over to the right, I want the sum range to be the invoice amount. So I'm actually going to get rid of those dollar signs over the sum range, right? So I'll highlight E8 to E73, and I'm going to hit F4 a couple times. So I hit it. Now it's just dollar signs in front of the numbers, dollar signs in front of the letters, and then the dollar signs are gone. So that's the easiest way to do that. Now when I copy this over, I can see that this is just summarizing ABC company for the West by invoice amount. And now, now that I did copy this over to the, to the right, I actually have to anchor that range again because or else it'll move. So I have to go back to my sum range and just F4. Now I can copy this, and so I could see that ABC company, this is the total number of units, or the total quantity. This is the total amount of the invoices in the West, the Southeast, and then this is Joe Smith in the West and the Southeast. So that's the difference. I mean, the difference is it allows you to have two criteria to select and summarize the data by. All right, well, I hope this really helps you out. And if you have any questions or anything, just throw it in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. All right, thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed this Excel tip. If you did like this video, please hit like and please subscribe to my channel so you never miss any of my Excel tips and tricks. And please check out my complete Excel training course on udemy.com. I'm offering all of my YouTube viewers an 80% discount on the complete course. Just click the link below or use the promo code YouTube80. This course is currently eight hours long and is broken down into three sections. You have the basics and beyond, then you have section two, ultimate reconciliation and analysis, and lastly, pivot table domination. So check it out, click the link, and save 80%. Till next time, this is Scott, signing off.